So good afternoon, everyone. My name is Miriam Flatley and I'm a senior physiotherapist in Galway University Hospital with a special interest in hematological disorders. So first, I'd like to thank Multiple Myeloma Ireland for inviting me to speak today. I'm going to talk about exercise and movement for multiple myeloma, and I hope that you find the information provided useful. So hopefully most of us are aware of some of the general health benefits of exercise. Um, for example, we know that exercise plays a role in improving the function of our heart and lungs, improving our mood and boosting our mental health and improving our bone and muscle health. And these benefits have been well documented for years, but in more recent years, um, there's been a wealth of emerging evidence to demonstrate the benef benefit of exercise for patients with cancer. And I suppose as a physiotherapist, it's very empowering for me to be able to, be able to tell patients that as well as being effective, exercise is also very safe for you to undertake before, during and after your cancer treatment. And there's a wealth of information, as I said, and evidence out there to support this. Um, another factor we consider is that we know that your fitness levels can be affected um, by your disease, um, by your cancer, so multiple myeloma included, and by the treatments that are in place to manage your condition. And this further highlights the need to include physical activity into your management plan. So uh, specifically in relation to the side effects or the symptoms reported by patients with multiple myeloma, here we can see the effect of exercise on commonly related symptoms. So we can see exercise has a role to play in reducing pain and fatigue, um, in improving our blood counts, so in particular our, our red blood cells and platelets, and in improving um, your bone mass density, which can help reduce a risk of fractures. So as I mentioned, the, the benefits of exercise for people with, with multiple myeloma is well documented. And I suppose um, the important points to remember are that is that exercise can help prevent functional decline. So this will be different for everyone. Um, this functional decline, it may mean just moving around your house or climbing stairs, or it may mean being able to complete a 10, km, 10 kilometer walk or cycle and that you would usually enjoy. We know that exercise, as mentioned, helps to improve fatigue, helps strengthen your bones, and it can also help to improve the effectiveness of the treatment that your, uh, that your hematologist will have indicated for you. And as mentioned, it can help to reduce treatment side effects. So now that we know that exercise is effective and beneficial, we need to look at it in a little more detail and consider the type and timing of exercise. And the American Cancer Society recommends that cancer patients should take part in regular physical activity. Their guidelines include that people should avoid inactivity and return to normal daily activities as soon as possible after diagnosis. So the recommendations specifically are that patients should aim for 150 minutes of aerobic activity every week and two to three sessions of strength training weekly. So we look a little bit closer at um, what this breaks down and what this means, but I suppose aerobic activity is a type of exercise or workout where your heart rate and your breathing increase, but not so much that you feel like you need to stop and rest. And examples of aerobic activity include running, walking, stair climbing, cycling, dancing, among, among other activities. So as everyone has different activity levels, we recommend that you start slowly and gradually build up to aim for 150 minutes a week. It's really important to pace yourself. And as I said, tailor the exercise to do something that you enjoy doing or that's easy for you to do. So if you've never cycled before, it wouldn't be recommended that you start now. We would say start walking and gradually build it up. And how you can break up the 150 minutes would be to walk 30 minutes a day, five days in the week. Obviously, if you do more than the 150 minutes, that's okay too. But as a general guideline, aim for the 150 minutes. You can walk also if you, if you find that walking for half an hour might be a little bit challenging to start off with if you're not used to exercising. Start with doing 10 minute walks and repeat three times in the day. So it's important as well just to remember that physical activity needs to continue for at least 10 minutes to be considered a session of exercise. And when we talk about moderate intensity aerobic activity, intensity describes how a person, how hard a person works to complete the activity. So with moderate intensity exercise, what we mean is that you should, you may be sweating, you are still able to carry out a conversation, you can talk, but you can't sing. And if we move on to look at strengthening exercises, which can include some of the balance exercises that we'll specifically talk about and mention later, um, 
strength training or resistance training aims to work your muscles by using resistance and aims to build up muscle strength. And as mentioned, we recommend two to three sessions a week. Again, it's important to choose an exercise type that suits you and is accessible to you. So when we talk about using resistance or strength, we, you could use a weight, for example, a dumbbell. You could use a bottle of water around the house to start off with. You might be provided with resistant bands from your physiotherapist, or you could use your own body weight or exercise against gravity. And they're all examples of, being, of strength training your muscles. How you can progress these exercises is by increasing the repetitions, that, the number of repetitions that you do of these exercises or increase the weight. Again, it's just very important to highlight that all of these exercises should be kept comfortable. And if you have a known injury, seek clarification on what exercises are suitable for you. For example, if you have a, an, an old shoulder or hip injury, it's important that you can, your exercises can accommodate this injury and you can work around it. So again, if you're unsure, it might be a good opportunity to look for an appointment with a chartered physiotherapist to get a little bit of guidance and clarification on what's suitable for you. So I'll demonstrate as well a few flexibility or stretching exercises as the talk goes on as well. And I suppose there's a little bit of mixed evidence um, out there at the moment to show when it's beneficial to do, to do these flexibility exercises. Uh, so usually we advise people to do what's comfortable. So they can be carried out pre or post exercises. The important thing is that you're holding the exercises for 15, 30 seconds and include at least two to three repetitions of each exercise. So for example, if you're exercising the upper limb, two to three repetitions on your right arm, two to three repetitions on your left arm. Really important points to remember as well is for these exercises not to bounce, keep them nice and slow and controlled and avoid holding your breath. Don't aim for pain with these exercises. And if you can keep them task or sports specific or specific to you, then you'll get more benefit out of the exercises. So I suppose the good news is that you can start today, start slowly and gradually increase the exercises, particularly if you're not used to exercising. It's really important to pace yourself as mentioned and a good way of doing this is to set goals and set achievable goals for yourself. Some people like to keep an exercise diary or an activity diary so that they can record how much exercise they've done, what exercise suit them and what don't. As I mentioned, very important to choose exercises that you enjoy. It is difficult to write exercise guidelines to cover everyone and everyone is different in terms of how much exercise they do. Keep all your exercises comfortable and again, look for an appointment with Chartered Physio if you need any assistance with getting started on your exercise programme. There's something out there generally for everyone and when we talk about being physically active, it, it means any movement that uses your muscles and more energy than when you're resting. So it doesn't mean you have to join a gym or an exercise class. It could, be, it could include walking to the shops or taking the stairs instead of the lift, gardening or dancing, or again, doing something you enjoy. And there are exercises out there for everyone. So if you have very limited mobility, we could start you off with like a bed or a chair-based exercise program and gradually progress from there. Again, just to do what you enjoy. And if you do what's available to you and easily to access, you're more likely to stick with it. I just wanted to include a little note about staying active in hospital. So um, over the course of your cancer treatment, you may have an inpatient hospital admission. And I suppose this is a time when it's really important for you to stay active as well, because we do know that bed rest can really reduce your muscle strength. We know that three days in bed can result in a loss of 10% of your muscle mass. So we really encourage people during their hospital stays to remain active and keeping their normal routine, getting up at their normal time as they're able to, wearing their own clothes and shoes, avoiding slippers. So we know that if you have inappropriate footwear or slippers, you're more likely to trip or fall. So again, we'd encourage people when you are packing a hospital bag to include your normal footwear or shoes that you'd normally wear. Important just to remember to sit out of bed, particularly for all your meals, and stay as active as possible. So it might just include walking in the ward or on the room, taking the stairs again instead of the lift. And it might be an opportunity while you are in hospital to meet the physiotherapist on the ward. Um, so don't hesitate to ask to meet the physio if you feel it's necessary. And there are other team members there as well who will help to, to you to achieve your goals during your hospital stay. So they would include the occupational therapist, social worker, dietitian, psychologist or podiatrist as well as talking about how important it is to exercise, it's also important to mention that there are specific times when it's not important to exercise, when it's important not to exercise. And they would include when you have an infection or a fever, if your blood count is low, 
if you have nausea or vomiting, if you're experiencing any dizziness, particularly any new dizziness, or any new symptoms, for example, pain, extreme fatigue, if you have a temperature, any pins and needles or chest discomfort. So if you are experiencing any of these symptoms, we recommend that you would just seek some medical attention and they can advise you from there how to proceed with your physical activity program. As Dr. Kane had um, already mentioned, uh, bone disease is a typical characteristic of multiple myeloma. Um, and again, the most common symptoms of bone disease would include pain, fractures or breaks of the bone, osteoporosis, which indicates brittle bones, uh, numbness or pins and needles. So if you have a diagnosis of multiple myeloma and experience any of these symptoms, um, particularly any new symptoms, it's important just to report any of these to your doctor immediately. And as we've mentioned, fractures or breaks to bones, um, we often encourage patients with multiple myeloma to consider falls prevention advice. So a great way to help to prevent falls is by staying active because we know the more active you are, the less likely you are to have a trip or a fall in that your muscle strength, your muscles will be stronger and you will have improved balance. So importantly, just to remember to include your weight bearing exercises, balance exercises, some resistance and flexibility exercises in helping you to stay active. It may be a good time to have your vision checked or, and to um, identify and eliminate any risk factors at home. So when we talk about kind of falls risk factors at home, it's little things like removing any obstructions or clutter that you may have um, on the ground or on a stairwell, removing rugs, again, they can be a trip hazard. It might be a case that you might need to install some handrails, particularly around steps or in the bathrooms. Um, ensure you have adequate lighting at home and watch for changes in flooring. So transitioning from one room to the other can sometimes cause a trip or a fall hazard. There's some specific advice around kind of your bathroom and bathing, bathing or showering. And you might even get benefit from using simple things like a non-slip mat in the bath or the shower. In the kitchen or bathroom, again, we recommend that you keep items you use often within reach to avoid climbing or overstraining. Simple things like cleaning up spills as they happen and their general, general falls prevention, prevention advice. If you need any further clarification on falls prevention and you can access the occupational therapist through your um, GP or through your consultant, they can certainly advise you a little bit further on how to prevent falls at home. So there are one or two specific exercises that we advise people with multiple myeloma to avoid. And these include rapid jerking movements. So in particular, avoid bending and twisting, particularly with a, weight, with a weight. So these exercises might be common poses that you might sometimes come across in yoga, golf, or tennis. So it's not that you can't continue with these exercises, but it's just to be mindful of poses where you might be doing excessive bending and twisting from the, from the lower back or using excessive weights. And again, if you need any further clarification on this, your physio can guide you on it. So we're going to move on to look at some start and do some gentle stretching exercises that we can all start today. You can join in at home if you'd like to. So the first stretching exercise is just an upper limb warm up. So Fanula, our model, is demonstrating just some shoulder roll exercises. So sitting comfortably in a chair and you can move forward in the chair so that your back is away from the chair. You can start with some shoulder rolls. So it's gently picking up the shoulders and rolling forwards and backwards, breathing comfortably and keeping all the exercises nice and comfortable and slow and controlled. So again, just remember that none of these exercises should cause you pain. And if you have a shoulder or neck injury and these exercises may be challenging for you, you can skip this part. So then we move on to general neck exercises. So looking up towards the roof and down before the, towards the floor. And these again are just general mobility exercises to warm up the body or prepare you for exercise. Would you with each of the stretching exercises, we recommend at least two to three repetitions. And you can hold the exercises for 15 to 30 seconds. We've shortened it a little bit here for the purpose of the video. Again, everyone will have a different range of motion, so it's impossible just to keep these exercises nice and slow and controlled. So turning to look over the shoulder, really good exercise just for stretching out the neck and upper shoulders. And then to follow on with this exercise, we have a head tilt. So gently tilting your ear towards your shoulder, feeling a gentle stretch at the side of your neck muscles. Breathing comfortably and keeping them really slow and controlled. So these are specific exercises that are postural exercises are really good for doing if you find that you're sitting a lot during the day. 
We can move on to a shoulder stretch exercise. So placing one, one arm across the body and using your other hand to give a gentle stretch at the elbow. Breathing comfortably and that'll increase your stretch a little bit. And again, a hold when you're doing these at home for 15 to 30 seconds. So with the arm exercises, it's important to do them on each side. And again, when you're doing them yourself, you can complete two to three repetitions of each. So we're going to move on to some scapular setting exercises, again, postural exercise. So in sitting, you might want to move away from the back of the chair again and draw your shoulder blades back together. And this is a really nice, comfortable exercise just for opening up the front of the chest. Take a nice deep breath while you hold this exercise will just help to increase the amount of air that you're getting in and out of the lungs and increase the stretch you get across the front of your chest. So tightening your shoulder blades back together and feeling a comfortable stretch. And we're going to move on to stretching the legs now. So moving forward in the chair, putting one leg straight out in front of you and your two hands on your opposite knee. And you can lean forward from your hips and feel a stretch going down the back of your straight leg. So everyone will be able to stretch to a different level. So keep it comfortable for you. If you want to increase this stretch, you can pull your toes up towards your head and you'll feel a little bit more of a stretch in your leg as you do that. So same principle again for 15 to 30 second hold for these exercises and two to three reps on each leg. Keep it comfortable and again lean forward from the hips and pull your toes up towards your head to feel a little bit more of a stretch. So this is a gentle seated hamstring stretch. And another stretch for the lower limb is one for our calf muscles. So again, you can take support from a chair or from a wall or a solid structure while you're stretching the calf muscles. And you're gonna pop the leg that you're stretching behind you, making sure that your heels are flat on the floor and your toes are pointing forward. So lean into the chair or to the wall to feel a stretch at the back of your straight leg. And just to make sure that you that both heels are on the floor and your toes are pointing forward and that'll ensure a more comfortable and effective stretch. So we've shortened the stretches a little bit for the purpose of the video, but holding for 15 to 30 seconds, and breathing comfortably. You can step a little bit nearer to the chair or to the wall if you find this one is difficult or you find that you're not able to get a stretch. And again, everyone will have different varying levels of flexibility. So now that you're nice and loosened up and warmed up from the flexibility exercises, we're going to move on to some muscle strengthening exercises. And this is a very simple exercise that we all do hundreds of times in the day. It's a sit to stand exercise. So you can use the arms from the armrest to push up into standing. Or to make the exercise harder, don't use your arms, whatever suits you. And the slower you sit down into the chair, the harder it will make the exercise. So we've just demonstrated one repetition of each exercise there. Pushing up into standing, using the armrest or without using the armrest. And that's a great strengthening exercise for the quads muscles. Another strengthening exercise would be simple step ups. And you can do this at home on a small step or you can do it on the bottom step of your stairs. So if you have a handrail and you need to use it, by all means do. Or if you're using a step and need to put a hand on a worktop or something beside you, that will help with in terms of balance also. So you can vary this according to what you feel able for. And it's a nice, safe way just to exercise and to practice some strengthening. So the, how you can alternate this exercise is by alternating what foot you use, stepping up, increasing the repetitions of the step ups will increase the intensity of the exercise that you're doing also. We'll move on to an upper limb strengthening exercise, and this is a wall push up. So, again, placing the two hands on the wall and gently bending at the elbows. And this is a good exercise for building up strength in your upper limbs. 
So again, every exercise won't be suitable for everyone, but these are just a few examples of upper limb strengthening exercises. So keep all the exercises comfortable and just work within your own, within your own range. If the exercises get easy, again, you can increase the number of repetitions of the exercise that you do. And Fanul is using uh, just a dumbbell or an upper limb weight in this exercise to strengthen her elbow muscle and her shoulder muscles. So really important when you are using um, an external strengthening device like a dumbbell, that you keep the exercise really slow and controlled and that you choose a weight that's suitable for you. The slower you do the exercise, the more benefit that you'll get. If you don't have a dumbbell or a weight like this at home, you can just use a bottle of water or something like that that's easy to hold on to and easy to use at home. Again, breathing through the exercises and keeping them comfortable and nice and slow and controlled. And we're going to move on to some balance exercises. So back in standing again. And the first exercise we'll look at is just standing with your feet together. So if you stand with your feet together, it narrows your base of support and it challenges the balance a little bit. So this is kind of the, the most simplest of balance exercises to start off with. To progress on, you could look at standing on one leg. So you can see Fanula is using the chair for support and as she gets a little bit confident and gets her balance, she takes her hand away. So again, really important that you tailor these exercises to suit your needs. And then to further progress some balance exercises, Fanula is doing a heel toe walk. So again, looking at putting one foot in front of the other, using the chair or support for balance and taking your hand away when you need to. You can hold these exercises for up to 30 seconds. Make sure you're looking straight ahead and breathing comfortably. So hopefully from that whistle stop tour of a few exercises, you found something in there that's useful for you and that you'll find beneficial. Um, there's, I suppose, a physical activity pyramid. We're used to seeing um, this in terms of nutrition and diet, uh, but it's interesting to see a physical activity pyramid for exercise too. And as you can see at the top of the uh, pyramid there, it talks about cutting down on um, being inactive or sitting watching telly, playing computer games, and taking a lift or stairs for more than 30 minutes at a time, it talks about. We move on down the chain and it just talks about introducing your stretching and flexibility exercises um, or balance exercises. And then the next layer is looking at introducing aerobic exercises. So that's your brisk walking or running, stair climbing, cycling or swimming. And I suppose the most important thing is to remain active every day. For example, doing little things like walking to the shops, mow the lawn, walk the dog, don't use the TV remote or walk, walking around the house, things like that. So the take home message is the good news is that you can start exercising today no matter what your ability level is, and every little bit you do counts. If you set goals for yourself, you might find that this helps to target your, your exercise prescription a little bit better. And if you're unsure, you can ask to see a physiotherapist if necessary to help you get started or progress your exercises. And I suppose the most important advice is that if you enjoy it, you're more likely to stick with it. So again, I'd like to um, thank Multiple Myeloma Ireland for giving me this opportunity and I'm available to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you very much.